So last week I made my part 2 of items to invest in to make profit in phase 5. So at this point I have two videos where I talk about which items are useful in phase 5, but I never really covered how you can obtain them without buying them. So I thought in this video we'd do exactly that. So I'll cover a couple of items as well as locations and routes where you can obtain them, in case you don't have enough gold to invest in the items, or in case the supply on your auction house can't match your investing needs. Or if you simply don't know what to do in game, maybe this video can give you that little spark you need and give you some extra motivation as to what to spend your game time on. Also, if you, if you have been asking me which mic I use and what my setup looks like, so now you can see exactly what setup I use in the description. Just look for the links at the bottom of the description. And while you're scrolling down there anyway, you might as well hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. So first off, there's Elemental Earth, and there are many great places you can farm this item, but my all-time favorite is in Badlands. Over here you have three different types of mobs, Lesser Rock Elementals, Rock Elementals, and Greater Rock Elementals. They are also located in different locations, and they come in different level brackets making it a great farm for anyone over level 37 in my opinion. The fact that you have three locations in the same zone also makes it very flexible because if one of the locations are taken, just run to the next location and farm there. Oh yeah, these also drop solid stones which are also worth keeping, they sell for 20 silver each on Firemo, which is significantly higher than the vendor value, so keep those and auction them. I think every earth elemental above level 36 drops solid stones, and earth elementals in lower levels drop heavy stones. Just like a side note, same thing applies here, they drop elemental earth, and they drop solid stones, both items you want to keep. The stone elementals here are around level 37, so I'd recommend you to be level 37 or above before going here. Obviously, higher level and better gear means higher efficiency and more gold per hour, as always. The second zone where I farm elemental earth is Arathi Highlands, and the mobs here are called the Rumbling Exiles. I've covered this location in a previous video of mine which I made before Classic launched, so I won't talk too much about it, but there is generally a bit more competition here because Arathi Highlands is a somewhat popular zone. Plus there's water and fire elementals you can farm in this zone as well. And if someone goes to farm for, for example, the fire elementals, and that spot is taken, they might go to the earth elementals instead. Point is, this spot is generally more populated than the previous one, but it is still a good farm if there's no competition for the mobs. It is worth mentioning that all of these mobs can also drop deep rock salt if that's worth anything on your server. Now one item I expect will probably double in value, maybe even triple or even more as well in phase 5, is Firebloom. Firebloom can be found in 4 different zones, Tanaris, Blasted Lands, Searing Gorge and Badlands. However, my favorite zones to farm this in is Searing Gorge and Blasted Lands. In Searing Gorge you'll find more Firebloom if there's no competition, and in Blasted Lands you'll find a bit more varied type of herbs, but you'll also find some Firebloom and it's a great zone to farm in, because there's generally less people in Blasted Lands than in Searing Gorge, which means less competition and more herbs for you. You can see the locations of the herbs in each zone on the maps shown on the screen, and my recommendation is really just to run laps around the zones wherever the dots are located. Next up we have large and huge venom sacks, which are used in elixir of poison resistance and powerful anti-venom. For large venom sacks there's three spots I would generally recommend, which is Black Widow Hatchlings in Duskwood, Cave Stalkers in Wetlands, and Scorpid Terrors in Thousand Needles. For huge venom sacks you have Scorpox Stingers in Blasted Lands, Carrion Lurkers in Western Plaguelands, and Stone Lash Flares in Silithus. For the Scorpox Stingers in Blasted Lands you can also obtain Scorpox Pincers, which are used for raid buffs, and you can obtain gems which you can turn in with a repeatable quest to obtain green items which are venderable, so there's some additional gold to be made here. The carrion lurkers in western plaguelands can also drop shadow silk, thick spider silk, and ironweb spider silk, some of which can also be worth auctioning. Next up is an item that should see a significant increase in value in phase 5, which is sandworm meat. Sandworm meat is dropped by the borers in Silithus, so here I'll show you the location for where you can find them. These guys really don't drop anything else of value other than the sandworm meat, and they are a bit scattered across the map, making them a bit annoying to farm. However, this is also why the price should increase by a bit. One counter argument here is that in phase 5, 
we'll probably spend a bit more time in Silithus than we currently are, meaning more people will casually be killing these boars and obtaining some sandworm meat without specifically farming for it, but because of the demand for this item, I still think it will go up in value. Just in case you haven't watched my investment videos and don't know what this item is used for, it's a reagent in making smoked desert dumplings, which gives plus 20 strength. Next up is a low key farming advice which takes advantage, or takes use of herbalism, and that is farming herbs in wetlands. Over here you'll mostly find Mage Royale, Briarthorn, Bruceween, King's Blood and Liferoot. Additionally at the graveyard up north you can also find a nice chunk of grave moss. And if you're a druid with aquatic form, you can find some strangled kelp in the water as well. The great thing is that when you pick up some of these herbs, many of them have a chance of giving you swift thistle as well, which are worth 1 gold each on my server and they will forever be in high demand due to thistle tea used by rogues. By doing complete laps around wetlands I can consistently make 50 gold an hour from farming herbs in a low level zone only with a 60% mount. Most of the gold comes from swift thistles and grave moss, with briarthorn and king's blood also yielding some gold. One reason I mention this route in this video is because first of all I think swift thistle will always be in high demand, but also because life root is used in nature protection potions, the normal ones, not the greater ones, and they can therefore also see an increase in value and demand in phase 5. So this herbalism route is good to both stock up on life root and swift thistle, but also to get some other herbs you can sell as well. If you only want life root, you'll mostly find these around the river and in the water in wetlands. Other zones where you can find life root is Stranglethorn Vale, once again in the river and the waters, and Dustwall of Marsh. But the reason I think the wetlands route has worked so well for me is that there's almost nobody farming here, so I get a ton of herb nodes each lap I do, so the less people do it, the better it is, and it's only 50 gold per hour, so I wouldn't imagine people stopping their SM or Marauden boosting to farm this instead, but if you have nothing better to do, or if you're playing on a new server, or if you just wanted to farm some herbs while watching Netflix, or watching Twitch or clicking that like button. This is a great farm in my opinion. Living Essence is used to craft nature resist armor and while I doubt the use of that in phase 5 and phase 6, one thing is for sure and that is that it will be in higher demand than it is right now because at the moment the only nature resist you need is for selling Marauder and boosts. And Living Essence has already climbed from 60 silver each to 1 gold 20 each on my server the last month. So it's already doubled, so I would assume it's a semi-popular investment item. So here's a couple of places you can farm for living essence. Decaying horrors and rotting behemoths in western plaguelands. These are really good to farm because they drop so many good items, like recipe, greater nature protection potion, pattern, living breastplate, living essence, plague bloom, traveler's backpack, major healing potions, heart of the wild, purple lotus, swift thistles, and more herbs as well. Basically, you've got a good stream of gold coming in from herbs, as well as phase 5 items to stock up on like Purple Lotus and Living Essence. And you've got a big jackpot item, which is the Greater Nature Protection Potion recipe, which is currently 85 gold on my server, and I expect it to go even higher in phase 5. One small note here is that these elementals share spawns with these slimes, so actually finding elementals can be difficult. Search both inside the cave and outside the cave, and kill slimes whenever possible and whenever the elementals aren't available. Next up you have some moss elementals in Fellwood, more specifically Warpwood Moss Flares and Warpwood Shredders. These are pretty much the same as the ones in Western Plaguelands, but they don't drop the recipes. Items of worth here are Living Essence, Dream Foil, Ghost Mushroom, Blind Weed, Golden Sansom, Grom's Blood, Heart of the Wild, Major healing potions, purple lotus, Arthas' tears, life root, swift thistles, and even more herbs as well, but those are probably the most valuable ones and the best ones. They have a great loot table with tons of herbs and once again, living essences which are worth over 1 gold each on my server at the moment. I decided not to cover mining locations in this video simply because we're 6 months into classic, and I'm still too lazy to level up a miner so I have no clue which zones or dungeons are the best ones, when it comes to mining, but if you want to see which ores, bars and gems 
are useful in Phase 5, I have two videos covering items of value in Phase 5, so go watch those and farm ores that are mentioned in those videos. So there we go, a video showing you different locations to obtain items mentioned in my Phase 5 investment videos, just in case you don't have the gold to invest or you simply don't want to spend gold on investing in items. I hope this video was helpful and I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I hope it helps you make tons of gold. Massive thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me over there, your support means a lot to me and I'm currently working on projects that can hopefully help you make a lot of gold, and I also have some projects in the works for gold making in TBC, and Fresh Classic servers as well, because let's face it, Fresh Classic servers are happening sooner or later. Patreons really are the backbone of what I do, and the support over there allows me to put a lot more of my energy into finding gold farms and making content, so once again, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, Asmin Gold, since you're back to streaming now, can you please unblock me on Twitter? Thank you.